All right. All right, we are live. Hey everyone, hope you are doing very, very well. Happy Tuesday. And today, as I mentioned in a previous post, we are joined by an amazing person, Shift Success client and friend, Amanda Whitaker. Now, Amanda has been a police officer or was a police officer for 15 years. She's now the founder of Super Simple Sleep that basically helps parents and young children to sleep peacefully and kind of have no disturbances through the night uh, and making people feel more energized as a result. Um, so she's going to be sharing her story from police officer to entrepreneur, her ups, her downs, and also we're going to be talking a lot on the to topic of sleep and how to make your little ones sleep better. And you never know, some maybe some tips about helping uh, yourself sleep better as well. So Amanda, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. No worries, no worries. So um, one of the first questions I ask everyone, because I'm really like intrigued about where you've come from. Um, where are you from and what was it like growing up for you as a kid? Um, I am from Toronto in Canada. You're from Toronto in Canada? Yeah, that's where I was born. Ah. Um, and I lived there till I was about three years old and um, came over here. My mum's British. Dad was Italian. Um, so me and my brother came over here. She missed her family. She wanted us to be schooled over here. Um, so we came here and I grew up in Croydon, South London. Um, and it was, it was fun. I really, Croydon can have a bit of a bad name, but I had a great group of friends and everything like that. So yeah, I really enjoyed um, growing up there. Amazing. You know, you're obviously you're half Italian then. So you're yes. half Italian. You was born in yeah. Canada. Is is can you see any cultural differences from your dad's side to your mum's side in terms of uh you know their backgrounds? Absolutely. Um, you know, by by their standards, I should be at home cooking all day, <laughs> looking after the kids and uh, having the house spotless. <laughs> um so yes, so kind of working from an early age and carrying on working through in, through like having my son is definitely a big difference. But all my Italian family all over in Canada, so I'm safe over here. <laughs> Amazing stuff. Hey, and what was you like at school? So like, um, was you an academic? Was you a geek? Was you a nerd? Was you a bit mischievous? What was you like? I was not interested in lessons at all. Um, PE and sports was my thing. Um, I just never really, I never felt really very good at the academic side of things. Um, but netball, basketball, rounders, that was kind of my place. Um, and it was like the same kind of group of girls that were on for all the teams. So a lovely group. Um, maybe a little bit mischievous. Maybe didn't go to all the lessons I was supposed to go to. Um, but I just, well, back then I thought I, I knew best and just thought, well, I just don't want to waste my time. So I'm just not going to go. <laughs> um, but I um, got my GCSEs and went on to college. So I didn't do too badly. Nice, nice. So you went to college. You just, what did you study in college particularly? Uh, I did public services. So okay, I knew then, I knew then I, I either wanted to join the army or be a police officer. I was doing army cadets. Mm -hmm. which I really really enjoyed um so it's public services everything to do with like the law and public services as a whole mm -hmm. um so I did that for two years and then decision time what do I what do I do next <laughs> um I didn't really want to leave my mum so I decided against the army yeah um and I applied for the police I applied for the Met um I had two application forms in my hand. I had one for being a PCSO, which is mm -hmm. a police community support officer, or for the one for the regular police. Um, but I was 18 and I just didn't feel like I had enough life experience to mm -hmm. be a police officer. So I just applied to be a PCSO and got in. Got in straight away? Straight away, yeah. Amazing. I mean, so you're 18, you've applied for, so as a PCSO. Um, what was that like? Eye-opening. Yeah, very eye opening. Um, but I really enjoyed it just kind of walking around and had like my little kind of um, I was in a neighborhood team. So I had like my little patch of people to to look after. Um, I became a school governor for one of the primary schools there. Little neighborhood watch kind of meetings. And yeah, it was really it was interesting. But, you know, I was paired with some police officers and going out and doing some patrols like on a Friday and Saturday night. And that's where I saw like a different side of the public and right. how they could be. So yeah, very eye-opening. Right. Okay. 
So, so, so you're 18 at this, this point, join as a PCS. So how old is you when you actually apply to become a regular then? A year later. A year later. Okay. And like you explained there, you saw differences in public, like from being a PCSO to, to a police officer. Um, what other kind of a contrast did you, did you find from a PCSO, even in your job role to, you know, being a full-time regular, did you find like the workload was more, did you feel like it was more fast paced workload? What, what kind of differences did you notice? Res- responsibility probably is number one. Um, yeah. Being able to arrest someone and have that kind of have someone's life in your hands, like every decision you make has a bearing on someone else's life. Um, so the responsibility mm-hmm. is quite a lot. Shift work, doing night mm-hmm. shifts. Um, mm-hmm. I don't do well on little sleep. Um, so doing <laughs> night shifts was very um, interesting. Um, but then also the difference in like working on a bigger team was great, really, really great. Going around in a car with lights and sirens on is always a novelty that you kind of you have in your head like when you want to join as a police officer I think for most people um Mm -hmm. but certainly doing that was a lot of fun amazing and you know obviously throughout your career as a police officer you worked in there for 15 years in total right yeah what kind of different roles did you have you obviously was response was on the beat was doing other things the first major part of the first seven years was response team so answering Mm -hmm. 999 calls um I did my own driving course in that time and was driving around um I worked in Brixton so I was predominantly in Greenwich when I first started and then I went and spent a few years at Brixton which was very (laughs) eye-opening Yeah. Um, very eye-opening what kind kind of things (laughs) just difference in type of the demographic of people or demographic of people and everyone hates you if you're a police oh, really? officer in Brixton, no matter if they're a victim, witness, suspect, they all just immediately hate you, which I found quite difficult wow. to adjust to going from somewhere mm. where not everyone hated you and that kind of thing. So that was um, mm. very interesting. Um, and then mm-hmm. from there, I went into, they call it they called it then the CPU, which is a case, case progression unit where you would, someone else would go and arrest someone and book them into custody and then you took over the job you interviewed and then did the case file and hopefully got a charge and then on and that was really interesting I really enjoyed that side of things so I applied to get on the detective scheme uh, did that. got sent back to Greenwich where I'd come from because you can kind of choose preferences as where you go mm-hmm. um, and I was put on the um, the domestic violence unit Right. which was I did that for a good few years as well um I'd had my son in between that time okay how old was you when you had your son I was just 10 30 okay cool okay it's 10 30 yeah. um and I had about a year off mm-hmm. on maternity leave went back and I was still in the domestic violence unit mm-hmm. um and then I became the Claire's law officer Um, So Claire's Law is when you can apply to find out your partner's background, um, anything to do with domestic violence, which I really, really enjoyed. But it was just telling people bad news every day about their current partner. Um, (laughs) And then I went on to the Criminal Justice Hub. So that was dealing with case files and getting them up to standard for court, trying to help officers with case files and disclosure. Mm -hmm. And that's where I ended. That's when that's when I left. So predominantly response, okay. investigations, and then kind of uh, case file and courts. Amazing. So it's quite a variety of, the, of your career then, which is pretty awesome. Um, so that's interesting. So you obviously had your son, which is awesome. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, when you're off on maternity leave, knowing that you've got to go back, how did, how did that feel for you? Because you obviously went felt- back. Yeah, at the time it felt fine. My la- my line manager was brilliant um, nice. and she made it really easy for me with like my flexible working pattern and where I was going back to. And so actually it felt fine. Um, I was looking forward to going back um, and yeah, it was it was all good. It was all good. That's, that's really good to hear. So a lot of the like conversations we have is like, people are on maternity leave and they just don't want to go back. They're like, oh, you know, but it's, so it's quite refreshing to hear that you actually really keen to go back. Yeah. Um, so what changed for you then? So obviously, obviously you resigned from the job. You have 15 year career and all these kind of different roles. Um, you've had your baby boy. 
Um, is it just the one kid you've got or is it? Yeah, just the one. Just the one. Fantastic. Um, so what kind of changed for you? You where you thought, I'm going to start a business, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have to leave the police or, you know, change something in my life for this to happen. Why not just stay in the police forever? What, what kind of changed for you? It was a build up over a few years. So after my son was born, um, at about four months old, he, he didn't sleep. Um, <laughs> And I really struggle with that. Okay. <laughs> so I yeah. sought help from an external person to help with that. And then about a year later, I this this person got in touch with me and said, hey, I'm running a training course um, for my ex-clients to become sleep consultants. And mm -hmm. I thought, yeah, that sounds like something I want to do. So I trained and certified and I ran it mm -hmm. as a side business whilst being in the police I ran it mm -hmm. as a side business for about four years um mm -hmm. and there came a point where I just didn't have time to do both mm -hmm. um so I chose the police because it was that guaranteed wage every month yeah but then <laughs> when I went back to work um after being on maternity leave I remember mm -hmm. I remember being sent to a different police station to deal with a prisoner Mm -hmm. um and I started my shift I think was like seven till three um mm -hmm. my husband who's a police officer as well was on a late shift and he was working 12 hour shifts back then so he was mm -hmm. doing like a two till two um and I remember being sent over to the, uh, this different police station dealing with a prisoner and it got to three o'clock and there'd been a right kerfuffle with like the solicitor not turning up and everything just being delayed and taking long so I'd interviewed and I got everything ready so it just needed to send it up to the CPS for mm -hmm. a charge and decision so I called up the late turn supervisor and I said oh I've got you know progress my prisoner as far as I can um it's now three o'clock I need to go and I need to go and pick up my son from nursery yeah and I just remember him saying there's no one to deal with it you can have to deal with it yourself and mm. I literally just like hung up and I remember bursting into tears thinking, well, who's going to pick my baby up? Like my husband doesn't finish till two o'clock in the morning. Like what, what, you know, and obviously your duty as a police officer, I'm like, well, I can't just leave. I can't just stand up and just walk out. And then this, this prisoner's just sat in the cell, not mm. being dealt with. And so I was like, oh, well, I've got to stay. So I stayed and I think I stayed until about five o'clock. Wow. Okay. <laughs> and um, I'd sent it up and I'd, you know, got um got the decision back and I was like, look, I just need someone to charge and remind them. Um, I'll do all the I'm back on at seven o'clock tomorrow morning, I'll do all the paperwork, everything then. And I called back and I got a different supervisor and I said, you know, it's kind of five o'clock now. They're like, Oh, why didn't you say I we would have sent someone over? I said, Well, I just spoke to sergeant so and so and they just like literally just said I had to deal with it. Like, oh no, no, no. And I thought from that point on, I thought, I'm not doing that. I'm not risking yeah. having no one to be able to pick up my son. Mm. Um, so like I moved to a different department to mm. enable me to not have that fear of someone not being, you know, there, there for him. So I was running this alongside the police mm. and then it came a point where I was like, all right, I can't do both. I don't have time. Mm. I'm just going to go basically for the easy option right now and go for the, the guaranteed wage. Mm -hmm. Um and then I did that for about, I kind of like stopped it as a side business for about a year. Mm. And then things at work just took a nosedive, took a nosedive. In terms of culture <laughs> or workload? or Well, a bit of everything, really. Things got bad reputation-wise for the police. Um, I got some new supervisors. My son was diagnosed with autism mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. My husband does a role where he gets deployed um any protesters mm -hmm. he gets deployed um any big events and they were just being very unsupportive and inflexible when it came to childcare. Mm -hmm. um so it came a point where I felt like I had to choose between that job and the welfare of my son and if you ask any parent that yeah they're no just gonna question. say well yeah um and I just I had this niggle in the back of my head that this is the sleep side of my work is something that I always far better enjoyed um helping people in a different way and I knew it was something that I kind of wanted to to pursue but I didn't I didn't know how mm. like I said being a police officer is all I knew from my adult life and 
I just didn't know. So I kind of felt like the universe was kind of telling me that now's the time to leave. Um, so yeah, that's how I'd wow. had enough November, November, 2022. I was like, that's it. I'm going. Wow. Thought, so yeah. How did, um, how did that go? So like when you've made a commitment in your mind, cause this time, I mean, this, you haven't even joined shift success this time, right? You are, or have you, or have you just joined? I think I just signed up cool. literally just had like, yeah. Okay. So this, this period is going on. You're on, on about resign from the job. Um, you fed up with it. Um, you've not got like an additional income sorted yet and you're a mother with a family like obviously there must be nerves going through your head thinking Jesus how am I gonna how am I gonna pay the bills I'm gonna do this etc etc so what's kind of going through your head at that point before the actual resonation when you're just thinking about it because you've made the decision I mean you're committed and we'll talk about your success in a second but you know What's going through your head at that period of time? What, what, why did you go ahead with something in spite of the fear? Um, I just called up my husband and was like, I'm done. I'm done. I just, I feel like I just want to email and say, that's it. This is my resignation. See you later. Um, and he was like, if that's what you want to do, do it. Is that what he said? He's like, if that's, he said, if that's what's going to make you happy, oh. just do it. And I was like, fine. I, I, so, I, Honestly, I, I absolutely love that. Um, what's his name? Lee. Lee, shout out to Lee when you listen to this back. <laughs> absolutely amazing. And the reason I say that, um, and this is general for everyone listening on the podcast, amount of conversations my team has with with couples who don't believe in one another and kind of force each other there in spite of the unhappiness that one particular partner is having in the fear of losing whatever life they've got in terms of a house or the car or whatever is ridiculous and we all we can see it's day from light when people say my partner doesn't want me to do this and then i see couples like you who are making the success of themselves with this genuine support right genuine care love and support and i think that's amazing so um yeah big shout out to lee um so um you do you write up a letter to your supervisor do you send an email how does that go down so I sent an email yep. um, and I just, I think I CC'd in everyone <laughs> above my supervisors yes. um, and I made it very clear as to my, my reasons why I was resigning. Um, sent the email in and that was it. So it was like, a, you have to give a four weeks notice. Um, but due to some of the comments they'd, they'd made to me before I left, I said, oh, I'm just I'm not well enough to see out my four weeks. So. I'm gonna to have to go sick unfortunately um so that's what I did and then I they didn't see me again I didn't see anyone again I didn't hear from anyone I didn't see anyone didn't speak yeah. to anyone by one person um on my team I went and cleared my locker out I went and cleared my drawers out um on a day where no one else was there mm -hmm. and that was it wow so I'm assuming like when you obviously got the, these snide comments like we hear all the time when people when our, when our members tell people they're leaving the job because they're going into business or they've built this business, they do get those like jealous remarks almost like, oh, you know, what about the pension or all oh, be careful or, you know, make a bit of a piss taking comment for you. Did you did you get any of those or was it genuine concern? Yeah, I think it was it was probably genuine concern. Um, Amanda, now's not a good time to set up a business. What about your pension? Yeah. Um, and I said, <laughs> because I've been part-time for five years as well. I mm -hmm. said my pension, I mean, the pension as it is, mm -hmm. is peanuts. Yeah, I agree. And pension for me, having been part-time for five years, and I didn't even come out of it for a year whilst I was on maternity leave as well. So I said, I'm not getting next to nothing. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, I think the words I used was, like, I'm not waiting until I'm 60 to be happy and to be free. Um, and that was kind of the long and short of it. I'm not waiting all those years to to be happy really wow amazing you know and if everyone listens to that is something we badger on about in the podcast all the time um happiness doesn't wait at retirement you're living right now right yeah. these are the younger days so um amazing congratulations so you're unhappy in the job you've you've had your son you've got the support from your partner lee you leave the job um and now you enter well kind of you're in it already but you go into the business world, you join Shift Success, um, and you, now you're the founder of Super Simple Sleep. Yeah. Um, 
do you want to explain to people what you do? I kind of give a brief summary at the beginning, but I'll let you do it. Yeah, so um, I help babies and young children sleep peacefully through the night. So whether it be a young baby that is waking up multiple times in the night and then parents don't know how to settle them to get back to sleep or an older child that won't stay in their bed and keeps getting into mum and dad's bed um give them the knowledge and how to change it and support them through it amazing so this is a this is a take i've been looking to i've mentioned this in the podcast already but i'm getting broody as hell like i'm i'm watching kids and their fathers at golf lessons and i'm getting like (laughs) butterflies (laughs) in my stomach thinking about kids and stuff like that and yeah i'm a period in my life where I reckon the next two years, you know, you know, kids will be here, a little series. Um, obviously, because I haven't got kids, um, you kind of don't understand how bad sleeping can be until you actually start speaking to people. Like, you know, when I speak to my friends at the gym, I'm like, mate, it's, you know, sleep, nah, it's fine. But it's actually a real, real big problem. And um, I noticed that when I don't get the sleep, for whatever reason, I wake up in the middle of the night and just can't get my sleep, it affects my whole day, couple of days. It's like a you know, kind of a hangover in in a weird way. Um, For you and your business, have you, do you work with a particular age range of kids? Is it from like birth to a certain age? What kind of, what do you work with? Yeah, so from newborns, um, we can set up really good habits Mm -hmm. to um, establish good sleep once they're a little bit older. Mm -hmm. Um, But up until kids, until they're seven or eight and in beds. Wow, amazing. And you know, I can remember as a young kid, I used to have nightmares. I don't know if I was eight, eight years old or 10 or whatever, but I can remember having a lot of nightmares and waking up in the middle of the night. Um, for for you, are you finding it more common that in those age ranges that you'd say, I don't know, a kid who's eight, seven, six, or more harder to get sleep than uh, like a newborn or kind of someone at nine months, as an example? What are you finding there? Absolutely. The longer... The longer it's left, mm-hmm. the harder it is. It's not right. impossible, yeah. but when children are older and can particularly talk mm-hmm. um, and have their little personalities, personalities mm-hmm. um, it can be it can be a little bit harder, and it can take a little bit harder. Mm-hmm. But it's absolutely doable. Amazing. So what you're saying is that if if a baby has trouble sleeping at nine months old, as an example, and if that's not addressed, that will carry on until they're eight years old potentially so if a baby isn't isn't sleeping through by the time they're one years old yeah they have 80 percent chance of having sleep troubles until they're five years old wow wow that's a long time of frustration for a parent yeah jesus yeah. christ okay and kind of what what are the causes of that um because obviously you know you hear people who have babies and they sleep fine amazing but obviously you hear those nightmare stories where you know parents don't get the sleep what's kind of the causes of you know restless sleep or babies not getting sleep really and truly it's all about how they go to sleep initially um so it's just a habit that would have been formed over a period of time so for example if someone is feeding their baby to sleep every time or Mm. rocking their baby or there's a dummy any external factor, we mm-hmm. I call it a prop. It's a prop for a baby to fall asleep. Wow. Um, so if, for example, they've been fed to sleep when they initially go down to bed, mm-hmm. when they wake up in their night in the night, mm-hmm. they don't know how to get back to sleep other than being fed back to sleep because right. that's how they were put to sleep in the first place. Right. Okay. And it's really hard because as a new parent, especially if it's your first, you're just like, you're just winging it. You're just, you just do what you do to get through the night and the day. You're just doing what you think's best. Mm. But it's just a habit that would have been formed over a period of time that they then just get used to. Mm. And because they're a baby, they just don't know any other way. They're mm. like, listen, you're the adults. You're putting me to sleep. I don't know what I'm doing you need you know you need to do it for me so when I work with the family it's just reforming habits that have been set changing them and also it's not just one thing Mm -hmm. if it was just one thing I could bottle it and sell it yeah yeah. it's it's everything together it's routine so like lifestyle is that what you're saying like like two parents could work different careers and that might impact the sleep of a of a baby 
It could do if you're if the baby is having different bedtimes every night. That's mm. really inconsistent because their body will come to expect sleep mm. at the same time every day. Mm. So if their bedtime is varying from seven pm till ten pm, or sometimes it's six, or sometimes it's nine, if they're overtired as well, that causes lots of night wakings and it causes early wakings as well. Mm. So finding the right amount of tired for a baby is like walking a tightrope it's really really tricky to do and wow. every child and baby is different yeah yeah um how much like for an adult i think it's like seven to eight hours of sleep we should have for a baby is there like a set time frame that a uh that baby should have for 12 12 hours 12 hours of sleep yeah that's what i that's what i get from my babies when i work with the family 12 hours of sleep bloody hell um does it change i don't, I don't know if you had difficulty in this like I wouldn't mind having twins. I know you can't like pick or anything like that, but I can imagine, you know, it's more difficult having twins where, or is it, I don't know if you're, if you're teaching the same, well, kind of implementing the same things, would it be harder or, or not? It, it wouldn't be harder, even yeah. though you'd have, even though they're twins, they yeah. still are different ch- children. Yeah. So their needs would be different. Um, yeah. When I say 12 hours, that's what I always aim for. Some babies only need 11 and a half. Some babies need 11 hours, 45 minutes. Um, And also I look at the distribution of sleep over a 24 hour period. Mm. So if a baby's young enough and still napping, Mm. I would then incorporate how much sleep they're having during the day as well. But if you've got twins, they still are different children. So, um, but I do love working with twins as well. I do because the the power it gives back to the mother and the time is just is brilliant um and also working with twins as well because they're so used to each other and their noises they're actually really lovely to work with and not as hard as you might think yeah 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 um talking on the mothers and the parents actually the or the 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 parents in general you know it's quite obvious to say that when a baby has issues sleeping the parents going to be tired because the baby's crying all night etc etc actually goes more beyond that i can imagine right such as affecting relationships maybe gaining weight for the parent um affecting their work what have you found by working with your clients that not only does their sleep get affected but because they're so tired and fatigued it impacts other areas of their life have you have you found any of that absolutely i remember vividly this one um mum having a conversation with her and she was like yesterday i crashed my car and i had all three of my children in the back Oh my God. Because I was so tired. Um, So that's like one of the more extreme versions. Mm. I've had parents who have lost their jobs because they've made mistakes at work because they're so tired. I've had people (laughs) divorcing or breaking up because tired and arguing just is an awful mix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've had children who aren't quite developing at hitting the milestones that you would might expect them to be hitting at certain ages Mm -hmm. I've had terrible eaters I've had terrible drinkers I've had children who haven't said a word because they've had a dummy for a really long time yeah um but parents it yeah it just it sends a ripple effect throughout the whole family just even the way if they've got a baby that isn't sleeping and they've got an older child they they say to me I'm so I feel so guilty for not being able to give my other child the attention and the energy they need. They tell me they want to go to the park and I just couldn't think of anything worse mm. than stepping outside the, you know, the house because I'm just so tired. Um, so yeah, ripple effect throughout the whole family, mood, eating. I've had mums that just want to either go back to do some exercise classes mm. or go out for a drink with some friends or just even sit over an evening time with a glass of wine or a hot cup of tea and just watch trash TV. Yeah. They're like, that's all I want to do. I just want somebody not to need me or not to touch me for a couple of hours. Wow. It is, yeah. sounds pretty intense. And you, you kind of, I still want kids, but you put me off slightly, but of course I know you, I'm going to go to you now, but um, Amanda, if, if in fact touching on that, because that is, that is pretty severe, you know, people crashing the cars, losing their jobs, relationships being lost, um, feeling guilty about their other kids, etc., putting weight on, not eating or losing weight. Um, I'm going to have 
let's say I'm going to have kids in the next two years. What are some high level or highlights you can say to me, Alex, whatever you do, do not make this mistake with your newborn baby or, or into being a toddler. What's kind of maybe three, three mistakes that some, you notice some people make and you're telling me, Alex, as your friend, do not do this. What would you give? Um, I would say don't underestimate the importance of a routine. Yeah either what time you're putting them to sleep every night okay and having a little routine leading up to it i would say don't get into the habit of feeding them to sleep or rocking them to sleep so try and let them fall asleep independently on their own you can be in the room with them but actually falling asleep if they can do that all on their own the earlier they can do that the better they're set up um (laughs) And the other one would be don't underestimate that the stimulation that they're exposed to, especially with newborns, even just if you held a a piece of white paper up with like some black dots, that to a newborn is mega, mega overstimulating. So taking them to restaurants or coffee shops or Mm -hmm. having loads of visitors around, it can just be a lot for them which really makes it a lot harder for them to fall asleep. So your job as the dad would be to kind of really bat off all the people that want to come and see your baby. Yes, they can come, but maybe every other day and maybe just one set of visitors per day to give your baby a a chance to rest and mum a chance to rest as well. And you guys to kind of bond as a family. Um, And, oh, just one more though as well. Yeah, yeah. Don't go on Google and don't ask lots of different people yeah advice yeah because you'll get that back lots of different advice back and not yeah. everything's going to be suitable for your baby either yeah. um so yeah google stay away from google in the middle of the night um and don't ask too many people too many different bits of advice great advice well that, that kind of throws that <laughs> so i had a i had a vision in my head of playing reruns of Tiger Woods consistently. So I'm going to assume that's going out the window as a, as a newborn. So uh, <laughs> I'll have to have a, have a think about that one. Um, and you're completely right about Google. I think, you know, we get people come to shift success and like, you know, um, they've been given advice from Google or people who aren't in business or friends and family. And it's just bad advice. Um, and also when the thing we look on Google, it's so much conflicting advice. Do this, don't do this. It's like a diet, right? Keto yeah. diet is great for you. Carnivore diet is good for you you know, this is bad, that's bad. Um, and it creates a state of inertia and like confusion and overwhelm. So yeah, great advice on that. Um, Google is helpful, but sometimes it can definitely, uh, is not the right thing to use. Um, so you've got a hundred, hundred percent success rate. Okay. So if our baby, um, I don't know if I can name it tiger or not, but if, if we, if our baby, um, if it has got sleep issues, you know, I'm definitely going to be coming to you. Um, you've got hundred success rate. Um, and I think that's amazing. What, what makes you different? You're obviously very, very, very good at what you do. I know you've got a passion for this, but what makes you different? Just getting really personal with families. Mm. There are loads of things you can buy off the internet. Um, mm. that is like an online course or a book mm-hmm. or, google as well or people can go into different facebook groups and ask advice Mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter because it needs to be personal to your baby Mm. okay because every like i said every single baby and child is so different Mm -hmm. so i get really personal with a family i really get to know what their life is like what their routine what their different needs are are there any other children in the house that we need to be mindful of Mm. um And I give them something that is easily achievable, easy to follow, and it relates directly to them. I personalise everything to the family because there's no point giving some a family something that they just can't stick to. Yeah. Um, So really manageable, really achievable. And I just explain this is why your baby's doing this right now. Yeah. And we're going to change it to this and this is why. Yeah. And families are going to me, oh. I didn't think of that or, oh yeah, I tried that, but I tried it for one night and it didn't work. Yeah, yeah. So consistency is key. So, and I am there for the accountability side for families as well. Big part. Yeah. Keep them on track, support them 
because you're making a really big change within your family mm-hmm. and it can be difficult. Mm-hmm. It can be like a roller coaster ride up and down, good days, bad days. But I'm there to support them, just to reassure them, no, what you're doing is right. Mm-hmm. Let's give it a couple of more days. Yeah, yeah. Um, especially with like my younger babies as well. Mm-hmm. Um, there can be a lot of change within a few months with younger babies. Mm-hmm. So we might need to tweak things as we go along as well. Okay, so this so I gather the data from them mm-hmm. and I say, right, okay, so I can see this is happening. This is what we're going to do now. So it can be like an ever evolving plan of action. But again, that is super personal to them and their baby. Amazing. So, so thinking about me, you know, you'd look at mine, my partner's lifestyle, you know, when we go to the gym, uh, what time we normally go to sleep, um, you know, if we have, I don't know, music on in the house at a certain time, you look at pretty much everything that we're, that we're doing in our lifestyles. And then basically you'd create a custom plan based off our lifestyle so that there may be some change if we're definitely doing something wrong that we shouldn't be doing, but also at the same time, it's an easy plan to follow to get the job done essentially. Absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. And if we go off kind of, you know, if we go off track and we're like, Oh shit, we've done this. You'll be like, right get back on track you had that accountability and also what you mentioned you know you're going to get friends and family like oh you know you should do this with the baby etc to make them sleep and you know mother-in-laws or father-in-laws or whatever um but you're there as a coach say no please don't listen to that follow this it will work take all the guesswork out of it like they don't have to guess and oh is this right that's right no i'm telling you exactly what to do i'm telling you exactly how to do it yeah step by step guide on exactly how to implement it absolutely amazing and how long like let's say i've got a baby and it's freaking like screaming all the time i just can't make it sleep i sign up with you like amanda i need your help it's affecting my golf game it's affecting my, my gym uh me and sophie have been snappy with each other come and help me how long would it take to get little tiger under under wraps how would it how would it how long would it take for the baby to sleep better so i normally give families a four-week yeah. period mm-hmm. and that's from four start weeks. Four weeks from start to finish, but that's everything wrapped up. So nighttime sleep, you will see huge improvements within a few nights. So quick. (laughs) But but daytime sleep, no one ever believes me when I say naps are harder, but they are. And that can take a little bit more time and consistency. So when I leave a family, I like to make sure everything is bang on everything is consolidated. Everything is consistent. We've had a good few days of everything happening as it should be and then Mm. I feel comfortable and confident that they leave me and go and live life yep and I'm assuming as well like let's say you know I mean by the way like four week is is nothing like four week is super fast so if you you you, you're getting 100 percent of results in four weeks that is phenomenal um but also as a benefit it's like you know the way I can probably give context to this if like you know, you start a business shift to success. If you want to start a second, you know exactly how to do it. When it, when you have a baby and then you have a second baby, because you've done the first baby with your likes of yourself and learning what to do, you can use that skill set on the on the next baby because you've you've learned it from Amanda, right? Absolutely, yeah. Amazing, yeah. amazing, um, amazing stuff. Really, really good. Hey, um, like, what would you say is the you know what do you enjoy most about your business and what you're doing um what's kind of that like for us it's obviously people leaving the job and being happy with their new careers but like for you what is that thing that you just you know i love this the results at the end um or even halfway through and parents are telling me like how they feel so i've had one mum who was like on the highest dose of antidepressants when we started working together mm-hmm. and then at the end of us working together she was on the lowest dose and she was wow. like actually do you know what in a few months time I feel like I could come off these all together well, which hell. was just amazing I've had um when babies start talking like I've had yeah. babies that just didn't talk because they had a dummy a real lot of time mm-hmm. in their mouth but they're like oh my god we can't shut our baby up now because they keep babbling, <laughs> which is lovely yeah eating um babies eating has improved and um, they're like oh my god they never used to drink any water and now they're drinking lots of water baby's mood improving yeah my older children in beds their behavior during the day is like they're like it's, it's like having a different kid 
like this kid listens to me not all of the time yeah um but listens better plays better and actually some of my older ones as well being at school they're like oh. like I had one of them message me the other day saying oh my gosh so and so's gone up and um in reading books so you have different phases different stages of reading books when they're young and they're like oh my god he's like now on stage three mm-hmm. um just because they've got the concentration and that able to learn um so the results of how people feel yeah. and baby's welfare and children's welfare and the, ha- yeah. the family's welfare really on a whole yeah yeah definitely. Um, is is the thing because obviously being a police officer you love helping people mm-hmm. um but this is just helping people in a different way mm. yeah for sure amazing i love that hey which do you with your with this business this you know amazing business that you've got is it do you there's obviously a big problem with insomnia as well do you imagine yourself going to that way have you got any like i would know, love to that? yeah cool. absolutely love to because more often than not once the babies and children are sleeping the parents will say okay but now I can't sleep because I'm so used to being up in mm. the night what what can you suggest and at the moment all I can suggest is a really nice warm bath and having a little routine for yourself yeah. um, before going to bed mm-hmm. um but it does definitely spark my interest um as well and actually some people I talk to they're like oh no my baby's fine but I can't sleep can you help me mm. um so yeah definitely something I'm interested in looking into in the future Amazing. I can see that going very, very well. Hey, um, you know, you're talking about the police, um, we speak to people all the time um, with thinking about leaving the police or building a business alongside the job, and they just don't believe in their skill sets. They look at their skill sets of arresting people or using the toxilized machine, and they just think they haven't got the skill sets for building a business. They, they just don't believe in themselves, right? They feel in- institutionalized. For you in your business, what what skills do you believe you've brought over from 15 years of being the police to, um, you know, building your now company? Basic communication mm. with people. Like I always, in the police, always say, you know, your your mouth is like your, your first weapon you should always use in yeah. any conflict before drawing anything else. Um, and I just think being able to talk to someone, being able to have empathy for them, mm is a massive thing um being able to read people just through their body language as well they might be saying something but actually you look at them thinking oh I don't I'm not quite convinced in what you're you're telling me there yeah and then having the confidence to kind of say look you really don't feel comfortable you know tell me how you're feeling oh actually this 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 Mm. um so I think communication is is the number one skill any police officer will have and I think you can just really transfer that to any business because business is conversing with other people it is it's all about people and, and they can do that absolutely yeah so yeah, yeah i think communication and empathy as well is the biggest things i've taken for sure yeah no no that's no, i can you know when i when i speak to other people who've been on the podcast there's those we have mentioned such as communication empathy emotional intelligence comes up quite a bit um obviously resilience because business is up and down um but also what i got from you there was actually you know i think sometimes sleep can be it's such a, it's a simple concept but at the same time it can be complex because you know there's lots of nuances to it um but with yourself what you're doing is articulating well and i find i feel like that's a skill you've definitely got in uh, explaining for a simpleton like me so um so yeah i love that hey um in your business journey so far what do you think has kind of been a biggest lesson that you could share that you found really enlightening for yourself not putting don't put too much pressure on yourself Mm. um I am very impatient and I just want to be good at things yesterday um but having patience and not being too hard on yourself to say that this is something completely different than what you've ever known um so just cut yourself a bit of slack give yourself time and try and enjoy it as much as you can. Like I've ma- I've made this choice mm. to do this, um, and I don't know if it was you or someone else. I'd seen a post that said like, "Choose your hard." Yeah. yeah, yeah. Choose your hard. Like this is hard, but it's a different hard to when I was in the place. Yeah. Like half terms coming up. I don't need to worry about half term. 
I don't need to worry about asking for leave. Mm-hmm. Even when we had the snow a little while ago and mm-hmm. my little boy's school was shut. I didn't need to ask anyone permission if I could work from home or I was like, I'm having the day in the snow with my son and I'm going to enjoy it. Um, so just it's, it's, it's a roller coaster. It's hard. It's good. It's hard. It's good. But just it's like it's your forever now. Yeah. So there's no rush. But enjoy the process. Enjoy le- learning new stuff as well. There's always something different to learn. So great advice yeah. great advice hey um what, what, out of curiosity what kind of inspires you amanda what kind of encourages you to be your best self what kind of really kind of lights you up i think my son really just yeah. to to let him know that you know mummy works mummy helps people um different to how mummy used to help people and different to how daddy helps people um but but helping people and working and just yeah getting those results like the end the end result for the babies and the family and the children is just whenever I start working with a family I'm always I'm so excited I'm like guys I know what's coming and I know you're gonna love it um and just having that journey with them and it's really special when you get chosen when they choose you to share that journey like they put your their trust in you um and I always think that's really special mm. and really nice and yeah. yeah the end result yeah 100 completely agree um Amanda what kind of you know what what if you could go back in time and ask and give your 18 year old self one bit of advice just one you had like a minute with that person right what advice would you give that 18 year old oh don't wear the blue eyeshadow that's for sure (laughs) um trust trust in the universe trust in the timing of the universe Mm -hmm. and like trust your gut Mm -hmm. just know that what 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 is for you and what's meant for you will come even if you think well why is it not coming now or this is really hard what does it mean just know that it things will work out how they're supposed to Mm. and just trust trust your gut feeling if something if you think no this isn't for me or no this is going to compromise my well-being or my family's well-being that's the most important thing Mm. if everyone at home is happy then that's it that's all that matters really I love that I I think I saw a post the other day where a lot of people are you know putting their jobs before the family and if you were to drop dead, um, you'd be replaced, you know, within a week of your job, but your family can't ever replace you. And uh, yeah. I think that hits point, which obviously you've made that decision to to put your family first, which I think is very, very inspiring. And um, yeah, especially with the decision you make of not having your business up and running yet, but here you are making it work. And I've always said from, I think like the beginning of ep- episodes of this podcast, those who tend to succeed are the ones who take the island. When you burn your boats and there's no going back, you take the F in Ireland, you win, right? And when people know they've got like a get out, um, they still, still win sometimes, but then less motivated and less pressure on them to actually succeed. So yeah, amazing stuff. Um, where can fi- people find out about your business, Amanda? Like um, emails or website coming soon or social media? Where can people reach out, especially if um, they've got some issues with their their, their babies? I'm on Instagram. Um, although I am of a certain age where Instagram isn't as maybe flashy or as a uh, influencer as some others, but I am on Instagram. Yep. Um, I've got a business Facebook, web, um, Facebook, Facebook business page. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a, a group as well. Um, mm-hmm. Baby sleep support. Mm-hmm. Um, website is coming soon, but my technology capabilities um it's on the list yeah <laughs> but it's not my forte but it's coming so so predominantly instagram and facebook awesome so what's your instagram handle so it's super simple sleep super, super simple. underscore sleep underscore yeah fantastic and what's your facebook it's super simple sleep it's my um facebook okay. business page fantastic. and then baby sleep support is, is the group that i run awesome your website i'm assuming will be super simple sleep.com yes <laughs> amazing stuff hey uh, amanda i kind of when I ask every single person this question when they join the uh, the actual podcast, but um, for you personally, on, on your point of view, what does entrepreneurship mean to you? 
me making my own choices um I think me me being in charge me having control over my life really um I've got control over when I work and how I work and that enables me to put my family first um it gives me opportunity to think differently and have different ideas I feel like being in the police you just I used to turn up to work and they just used to I knew what exactly what I had to do um but I don't think it ever gave me really an opportunity to think for myself and um anything like that so yeah choices I have a choice over how my my business is run what I do with it how I do it and it just gives me control I don't have to ask anyone for annual leave I don't have to ask anyone if I can take an hour's annual leave to go and watch my son in his school play or anything like that it's just we are first and I can then make my life around that um and just yeah taking it places where I just maybe never dream dare to dream or just think oh, oh I don't know about that but just having the choice or the opportunity absolutely amazing Amanda uh, I just want to say as well how you know, uh, you've been with us a little while. You've absolutely took the bull by the horns and you are smashing it. It's great to see your business progression. You grow as a person as well. Um, the results you're getting for your clients is absolutely phenomenal. 100% uh, success rate. I know if we have any issues with our uh, crying babies, we're going to be coming to you. And um, yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure so far in this short amount of time just to see you uh, develop and your business. Um, I am going to put a bet on it that you are going to be uh, a phenomenal success going forward the way you're going um and you're going to early grow from here um and what we'd love to do amanda actually is invite you back for the podcast in maybe a year's time 18 months time to see how things are going there and share your thoughts and where you're at then um amanda thank you so much for your time um please people if you've got any issues i'm seeing the work amanda does with these families if you have any issues with your children in terms of their sleep please reach out to Amanda on social media. Um, she's phenomenal what she does. Um, so that's enough from me, Amanda. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, this will be on the podcast if you want to listen um, on the audio, in the car or the gym. And it will also be on the YouTube channel later this week as well. So again, Amanda, thank you so much. And um, congratulations on your success so far. Thank you.